Well, welcome to this series of videos which I've called RD Works Learning Lab. Now, I've only called it that because I'm the one that's learning RD Works. I'm creating this series of video instructions on how to use this software um, because the manual is basically uh, a collection of in English words that have been randomized and put down and called a manual. So I've certainly got no connection with RD Works and I'm certainly not a teacher. But I hope that uh, what I'm going to show you here, uh, which is basically based on my own experience that I'm learning as I go, because I've only recently acquired the machine. And as if you've looked at my previous series of six videos about how to bring the machine into life, well, I have played with this program very, very slightly. I only touched on it enough to be able to get my machine up and running and prove that it was a working machine. Now to take it any further, I've got to do some work on this program to understand how it works and how to try and get the best out of the machine. I've got no idea how many there will be in this series or how long it will take, but um, we should get the first few over fairly quickly, but then it will be a, a fairly long term learning experience as I go. Well, let's get started with this first session. Um, I'm going to tackle the simple tools, the drawing tools down on this left hand side here of the toolbar. But before we do that, um, there are a couple of important things that we must tackle. First of all, if you look at the screen at the moment, you'll see that it's probably nothing like the shape of your machine. And in fact, if we go up here to configuration, config, and we look at page setting, we shall find that the page is actually a thousand by a thousand millimeters. Now I happen to know that my machine is 500 millimeters wide, which we'll reset here. 500 and the height of the page is only 300 and in the background we see a grid which is quite a coarse grid so what I think I'll do is adjust the grid to something like about 10 millimeters and we just make sure the grid is ticked and that will do okay the next thing you have to do is to establish where your machine zero zero is now there's a fair chance that when you press the uh, reset button on your machine the head will go over to this top left hand corner here and that's where zero zero really needs to be because if it's not then when we write our programs like this everything will come out mirrored. So how do we fix this problem? Well we come back up here to configuration and we shall get to the system settings and when we get to system settings there's something here called x-axis mirror so we need to mirror the x-axis by taking the x-axis mirror off actually um, and then we've got this little dot for position of the, the zero for the laser head um, I'm presuming that that should be over in that corner but I'm not sure that it makes any difference so anyway that's how I've set my machine up and we'll now do a close on that now we've configured our page, um, I'm going to take the simple precaution of doing a file save as and I'm just going to save this as an RLD file which is a drawing file and I'm going to call it blank page and I should just save that. Okay so I can always come back and open this page up again without having to go through those setting routines because I'm not sure how the configuration locks in whether it's per session or what. And hey, we're nearly ready to start. I just want to mention this little green dot only in the corner here. I haven't quite worked out what it's to be other than the fact that with broken Chinese it gives the impression that this is the Descartes coordinate zero zero and the Descartes coordinates as you're probably familiar with if you're not basically this is normally the y-axis up here with zero at the bottom left hand corner and this is the x-axis across the bottom with the zero in the bottom left hand corner. So you'll find from time to time when we start drawing things this green dot will jump around all over the page. Why? I haven't an idea at the moment but it must be meaningful in some way. Let's not worry about it because it doesn't seem to have affected anything that I've done so far. Right, well now let's start off by taking a quick look at the tools down the left hand side here. Now the top tool when you click on it is the tool that you're going to be using most of the time. This is your basic pointer. The second tool down when we click on that it's an edit node and if we just click to the first pointer again and I draw your attention to this blank space down below the toolbar 
When I click on the edit node, click, you'll see we get some extra tools appear down here. Now if you go to the top there of that little menu, you've got a little set of arrows which if we drag those, if we do a click and drag that toolbar up, we can put it right beside, whoops, we can move it again and put it there. So that when we open up that node tool, all our node subtools are right beside it. So we need to go back and choose the main selection tool and now we can go down to Align. Now Align is pretty straightforward. We're going to click on the page and we can click again. And there we have a line. I can't do a lot with it at the moment other than I can click on the line and I can put handles around it which enables me to drag the line around on the center there. I can drag the line around if I go onto the line itself, I can drag it around. Let's do that again. And with this time, we'll bring the line in, we'll click and we'll drag out a line. And you can see that I can move the mouse around now by taking my left hand mouse or lifting the left hand mouse button up. So my finger is off of it and I can drag it around where I want. Now, if I hold my finger on the control key on the keyboard, look what happens. It no longer wobbles around, it only goes into the X or Y axis. So now something important you have to remember. You need to click to close the line before you let your finger off of the control key. And that will then lock it into a horizontal or a vertical position. Let's just leave that there for a second and move on to the next what looks like a line tool. They call it Apollo Gen or Apollo Gen or to me it creates polygons but it basically it's a polyline um, in that what I can do is click 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 and it never stops it just carries on and carries on and if I want to produce a horizontal line for instance I can hold down the control key and I should produce a horizontal line click a vertical line click and then when I get back to the start point, if we watch what happens to the cursor as I approach that start point, it changes to something else. I can now click and it closes the figure. And at the same time, you notice it's put handles on it. Now, if I go back up to the main selection pointer again and click on the line, I can now move the center point around. I hold the line itself click on the line and I can drag the object around and the handles will go with it. So there's two or three ways to move the object. If I grab hold of a corner point it stays directly proportioned. I don't have to change anything or hold anything extra down. It just stays in proportion and scales it up and down. Unlike the center ones which stretch it, this is all standard Windows um, handle technology. Right. Let's take, let's skip this tool for a minute and let's do a rectangle tool. So here we've got a rectangle tool, which again we can click and bring a rectangle in. Or if we hold the control key down and start moving the mouse around, we create a square. Now we must let go of the mouse button, the left mouse button, before we let go of the control key, otherwise it will turn back into a rectangle. Similarly, when we use the ellipse tool, we can drag in the ellipse tool and now click and hold it down. And as we drag it around, it becomes any shape ellipse we re require. If I hold the control key down, it turns into a circle. So if I want a circle, I must let go of the left mouse button and then let go of the control key. Now I'm just going to tackle the um, very quickly we're going to bring in some text. I'll click on the text tool and down here I'm going to click and I open up a box which gives me the font that I can use. It tells me the height of the letters that I'm going to use down here and I'm going to set this one just for example I'm going to set this to 50. And then up here we've got text. Now I'm going to write a rather strange word in here and we're going to say OK. Now you may or may not know 
the meaning of that word depending on how familiar you are with um, vector graphics. Very briefly, all these lines, squares, circles, ellipses, they're all mathematical figures that are created in the background of, by the computer before they're drawn on the screen. When you do handwriting, for example a letter S, it's what they call a freehand curve. Now the computer has no means of producing an equation for a freehand curve. So back in the 1950s, the early 1950s, a French guy, and that's his name there, Bézier, created a way in which computers could sort of create freehand curves. So I'm now going to go to this curve tool and click on it, bring it into the work area somewhere, click, click, and lo and behold we've got this strange looking straight line on here. So I'm now going to click on the normal selection tool and watch what happens to the line. It becomes a full length line as I drew it. All the dotty bits have gone. Let's go to the edit node pointer underneath and we'll choose this add node. Somewhere on this line we'll click, double click actually, and look we've added a node. So if I grab hold of that node and drag it, something strange will happen. I've produced some curves, which is the whole point of this. It's called a curve line. But I'm afraid this is not the place for me to try and explain Bézier curves. You're going to have to look the word Bézier up on Google and spend some hours in here fiddling around with Bézier curves. I'm just going to very quickly give you a brief look at what happens. You've got these levers here and you've got these handles on the end of the lever and if I change the length of the lever look what happens to the curve. It's sort of like magnetically attracted to the handle and then as I move the handle around it changes the shape of the curve. And this one down here has got two handles on it and if I drag that handle I can make it shorter Oops. I can make that handle shorter or longer and this one grab it carefully it's miraculous that's curve tool I'll let you play with that to your heart's content okay until the next session when we start dealing with some of these other tools um, thank you for watching